The chopper is being prepared to ferry a research team from Macquarie University's Geology Department <laughs> and New Zealand's GNS, the Institute of Geological and Nuclear Sciences. They're off to do some groundbreaking and rock breaking investigation on the small island of Salander, off the coast of New Zealand's South Island. The team has to undergo a cleaning quarantine before taking off. First, the team leaders are answering some press questions. So, Solana represents a, a, a unique opportunity to study compositions of magmas and how they form from the mantle. And the GNS's interest is in getting a good map, geological map of the island, how much is lava, and how much is ash, and also how old is that. And what we're interested in is in really fundamental geologic questions. How does the earth work? How do the plates interact? Very few visits have been allowed on the island, and this is the first geological excursion in over 30 years. Only five team members will be allowed to land, stay and study for four days and collect rock samples. The helicopter journey takes about 50 minutes from the southern New Zealand town of Invercargill. Salander is named after the Swedish botanist who accompanied Captain Cook on his South Pacific discoveries aboard the Endeavour. It is a desolate, though a magnificent place, inhabited by seals and rare birds who have been used to having the place to themselves. One of the main reasons we're here is to see the potatoes actually grow on Salander. So far, looking at the soil, it doesn't seem likely. <laughs> the team sets up camp under the cliffs. It is an unprecedented visit, as these islands are not allowed human visitors. However, the rocks they hope to find will be geologically unique and help answer fundamental questions about magmatism and plate tectonics. Rocks on Salanda are lava flows, with some block and ash showing a more explosive eruption. The team is looking for a representative selection of rocks to measure age and geochemistry of the magnets and for evidence of possible future eruptions. The sea, seals and gulls seem oblivious to the sunset whilst the team gets a chance to relax at the end of a busy day. The next morning, the team heads up the cliffs to investigate the higher elevation rock formations at the top of the ridge. We're on the top of the ridge between Northwest, sorry, Northeast Bay and Southwest Bay. And we're pretty much sitting on a whole lot of gravel deposits. There's a, a big uh, blocky unit beneath us with blocks up to about, what were they, half a metre? And in that area, the blocks are supported by a sandy matrix. Um, and then it finds up to the top of, this, of that flow. So, as Fiona's doing as a good geologist, it's making a nice sketch of this section. We leave the first team working away on Salander, whilst the second team takes off to head back to Tayanau and Milford Sound. New Zealand's spectacular Fiordland is not volcanic but earlier magnets that crystallise deep in the Earth's crust. The glacial carved valleys and gullies have and will continue to yield incredible rock formations. This is the Pembroke Valley. Now this has um, so been that. faulted up and it's 1 to 2, 1.2 to 1.4 GPA and I think the temperature is about up to 900. Well, that's a good example. So this is the die right here. And that's all those reaction zones. Yeah. I mean, that's some of the later fractures and you still get the garnet reaction along it. This is dehydration here. And this has been converted in situ from amphibole to garnet plus clinopyroxene. And this is the melt that generated, we think generated this dehydration. So these are different generations of this melting and fracturing event. Can you see that oh, focused yeah. ductile yeah, shear zone right next to the yeah. reaction room there?
Oh yeah, look at that. Bamfable and melt and garnet. I think all this happens at the lower crust. A lot more of that here than I used to. That's a really nice garnet reaction zone. Oh, that's a gorgeous rock. I wonder what composition that look is. The, that's actually the pegmatite. It's the best muscovite I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, that's gorgeous. The teams have been very lucky with their finds and now head back to the labs to do the real scientific work, analyzing all the rocks with a variety of approaches to unlock their secrets.